All right, just a quick video showing a, a great little example of Calvinistic eisegesis. Here's the problem with Calvinism. They have a, a staunch pre-commitment to their tool of doctrine. They cannot just read scripture at face value. I've heard it said that Calvinism is a doctrine in search of scripture. They approach the Bible with this pre-commitment, and the result is they read their own theology into the text, and, and they cannot properly exe use exegesis when they're dealing with scriptures that very, very explicitly teach against their Gnostic heresies, because that's all that Calvinism is, it's just Gnosticism by another name. And nobody before Augustine believed in this hardcore theist, well actually nobody before Augustine apart from the Gnostics and the, and the Greek Roman pagans believed in this theistic determinism, this fatalism, all this other stuff, you know, this idea of infants being born with sin guilt. We're born with the body of sinful flesh, but we don't inherit sin guilt. That, that, that is a heresy, plain and simple. Uh, you only hear, you only have sin guilt when you willfully commit a sin. I, I could, uh, I've covered that in other videos, the, the false doctrine of infant damnation. But they cannot properly handle the scriptures because they have this pre-commitment to a man-made uh, theology. Calvinism is the height of man-centered doctrine. But you're going to see James White just falling all over himself to explain away Jeremiah 19, verse 5. Because it very, very clearly uh, refutes their, they not only refutes their hardcore determinism, but refutes their heresy, their Gnostic heresy, that God actually causes sin, and that God is the author of sin. Plain and simple. So you're going to see, he, he, he just struggles to really address it, and then can't just deal with it at face value. He tries to make, he, he, he basically has this thing of the secret will of God, which is something that these Calvinists have just made up to explain away the text. Watch him just use this textbook example of eisegesis. He's reading his own theology instead of just taking it at face value. Check this out. For him to be sitting up there in heaven going, Huh? Oh my goodness. I, Because, you know, God made us capable of doing this, but he wasn't smart enough to understand his own creatures well enough to know that they would become that depraved. Never entered my mind. I just... Now, the obvious consistent biblical interpretation is, I never commanded you to do these things. This is, n there is nothing in my revealed will to you that would give you even the slightest foundation for blaming me for what you yourselves have done. That's what it never entered into my mind. That means it has nothing to do with the holy will that I have revealed to you. You can find nothing in what I have delivered to you in the law, through Moses, through the messages of the prophets. Now, notice he's not able to just handle it at face value. He can't accept the fact that God is not causing them to sacrifice their babies to Moloch, you know? But you see, it goes against his hardcore determinism because something happened that God is, is very evidently expressing it, that that was not his will. You know, if everything is caused by God, you know, the logical conclusion is sin is caused by God. And Calvinists who are consistent will say that. I've, I've gotten in my comments section. They, they'll say that sin is the will of God because God causes all that, you know, they'll quote Ephesians 1 verse 10 to 11 out of context. But it's funny. He can't just take it at face value. He has this thing of the secret will of God because Calvinists make God into a liar with their, they have his revealed will and then his secret will. And essentially his secret will is the polar opposite of his revealed will. You know, uh, it says what it says. And by the way, too, this scripture, I don't know if James White realizes this, but this scripture actually addresses their whole secret will thing. You know, he keeps just insisting over and over, it's the biblically mandated distinction, but not once in this whole live stream he did, did he ever give one scripture showing anything about a secret will of God. Let's actually read what the text says. Jeremiah 19, verse 5. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, his so-called revealed will, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. Um, that would be his secret will, because it wasn't even his idea. But then Calvinists say sin was God's idea. But what does he say? Neither came it into my mind. That would be his so-called secret will, if such a thing ever existed, which it doesn't. It's, it's a thing they've concocted to explain it with their very evident scriptures that is showing that child sacrifice is not the will of God. But because of their pre-commitment to their agnostic determinism, they just can't handle it. Jeremiah 32, verse 35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Moloch, which I commanded them not, his revealed will, neither came it into my mind, his so-called secret will, that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. 
Um, your sin is your own fault. See, Calvinists can't handle the fact that if God causes sin, then personal accountability is removed. They can't handle that. It's the logical conclusion. So right there, how James White tries to just can't deal with that face value, it's the secret will of God. And they act like, like we, we deny they make that distinction. I understand you guys make that distinction, but the problem is this distinction doesn't answer the question. It doesn't solve the problem. It is the problem. Because either way, it's still God's will, you know? And either way, you know, and, and again, what's this, why are these two wills contradictory? I mean, if this whole secret will thing is true, you literally can't trust anything the Bible says. How do we even know that Jesus is the only way when God's secret will is maybe every religion is the way? You know, it's a whole other, it's just a whole problem they commit, they, they, they engage in when they think this whole secret will solves a problem when in reality it is the problem. So just a great little example of eisegesis. He cannot deal with it at face value. Why? Because Calvinism is a man-made, man-centered, man-exalting, man-glorifying theology. You know, as apart from the fact that, uh, basically as opposed to the fact that free will is a God-centered doctrine, 100% God-centered. Because you're responsible for your own actions. Any sin you do, you're going you're, you're gonna to give an account for that. And God is going to justly and righteously punish you for that if you don't repent of that. But in Calvinism, you can just pin your, you can pin the blame right back on God. Whether it's his revealed will or secret will, it's still God's will and you had no ability to resist. So in the end, God is still the one to blame. They cannot deal with this logical conclusion of their Gnostic heresy. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.